Uh, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to our latest press conference uh, here at the IEA. Today, we're uh, very pleased to announce the launch of our inclusive energy future, the Global Commission on a People-Centered Clean Energy Transitions. Uh, this press event is being live streamed and is available online on our social channels. We're very honored today to be joined by uh, Dan Jorgensen, the Minister of Energy and Climate for Denmark, who is the chair. And we will hear from Minister Jorgensen and from Dr. Fatih Birol, the executive director of the IEA. Um, we will um, take some questions as well from the press after uh, we show you a short video. Uh, this, uh, for members of the media who are on our Zoom, please send us your questions through the Q&A panel so that we can ask the questions to both Minister Jorgensen and uh, Dr. Birol. And uh, we have 13 minutes for this event. And without further ado, I'd like to turn the floor to Dr. Fatih Birol, executive director. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jet. Uh, uh, Mr. Minister, uh, ladies and gentlemen, greetings from the International Energy Agency uh, headquarters. Today, we are here to tell you about uh, another important uh, new global project of International Energy Agency. Our new global project is called Our Inclusive Energy Future, the Global Commission on People Centered clean energy transitions. Uh, many of you, I guess, know that recently I announced some of the IES major new initiatives uh, to support global efforts to deliver clean energy transitions and address our climate uh, challenge. Two of them, just again to uh, underline, uh, we are preparing words first roadmap to net zero by 2050. Many governments around the world, uh, including the European Union, Denmark was one of the leaders uh, here, United Kingdom, Japan, Korea, China, and uh, hope to see uh, uh, soon uh, United States uh, will be part of the, this group who are committing themselves for a net zero by 2050. But what does it mean for the energy sector? What needs to happen in the energy sector will be reflected in our report, uh, which is officially requested by uh, Mr. Sharma, who is the, uh, uh, the president of the COP26, and we are going to release this report on 18th of uh, May. I also uh, announced the IES uh, again with COP presidency, the net zero summit all the global leaders coming uh, together. And uh, we are organizing this uh, together with UK government. Again, uh, Mr. Sharma and myself will uh, co-chair it. And this meeting will be on 31st of March, 31st of March, to bring the world leaders focusing on the international uh, collaboration uh, here. These initiatives, and together with today's initiative, are the uh, signs of the IES clear a determination to lead global clean energy uh, transitions. Now, uh, dear colleagues, uh, as countries uh, advance their shifts to clean energy technologies, we believe the real success of this transition will be critically hinging on whether or not the citizens will benefit from the opportunities and how we navigate uh, the disruptions through clean energy transition and decisions taken by governments and uh, industry. In other words, we believe we must not neglect the people dimensions of clean energy transitions. And we believe governments uh, must find ways to understand and address social and economic impacts on individuals and communities. This is why uh, uh, I am convening this new global commission, bringing together leaders, decision makers, and key thinkers to examine how to ensure clean energy transitions, which are people-centered, equitable, and uh, successful. And we would like to share best practices and key recommendations with all global actors. I am delighted to tell you that this new global commission will benefit from the great leadership of a country that is one of the most active 
and uh, aggressive on clean energy and climate change. Not only in its own country, but globally as well. The Prime Minister of Denmark, uh, Mrs. Mette Frederiksen, will act as the honorary patron of the new Global Commission. I thank her uh, for agreeing to take on this important role. I am also delighted to tell you that the work of the Commission will be chaired by uh, Denmark's uh, Climate, Energy and Utilities Minister, Mr. Dan Jorgensen. And uh, thank you very much, Dan, uh, for uh, taking this uh, additional responsibility. Minister Jorgensen is very well known for his leadership and forward thinking in this field, and we are honored to have him driving this important initiative. So before I tell you more about the work of the Commission and its uh, members, I would now like to invite Minister Jorgensen to address us. Minister, uh, once again, I express my sincere thanks to you for agreeing to work with me and with my colleagues on this very important initiative. And uh, I would like to now to give the floor uh, to you. Over to you, Dan. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Birol. Uh, also a very warm welcome from my side to this press briefing on the launch of the new IEA Global Commission focusing on putting people at the heart of green energy transitions. Let me start by thanking uh, Dr. Birol and the IEA for convening this new initiative. The increased focus of the IEA on green energy transition and just transition under your leadership is truly commendable. I also want to thank you for offering Denmark to head the commission. It's a privilege and we look very much forward to getting started and will give it our highest priority. It is my hope that this new commission will contribute to delivering uh, important messages on how to achieve inclusive energy systems globally by putting people at the heart of clean energy transitions. The climate crisis is no doubt our generation's biggest challenge. If we are to address it successfully, it is in my opinion, essential that we are able to inspire and include people in a socially balanced way. It is essential for the clean energy transition that climate action go hand in hand with social justice, job creation, and welfare for all. Therefore, it is important that green jobs are at the core focus area for the work of the commission, as well as employment and the transitioning of labor forces away from fossil fuels industries and into other sectors. These are key factors of a clean, just energy transition. In Denmark, we've invested in renewables and green technologies to create jobs and growth. While the number of fossil jobs are decreasing, green jobs are growing even more. These are, of course, not just numbers in a spreadsheet, Behind the numbers are real people and families, traditions and working communities potentially being negatively affected by the green transition, unless we manage to put people at the very center of the transition. In Denmark, we aim to do this. Let me give you one example on how. Esbjerg is a coastal town in the very west of Denmark by the North Sea. I know that you, Dr. Biol, know it very well. Maybe some of the journalists here also. The Port of Espia has for decades created thousands of jobs in offshore oil and gas exploration. But lately, fossil fuel production in the Danish North Sea has been decreasing. And recently, the Danish government and the Danish parliament decided to set a final phase out date of fossil extraction by 2050 and to cancel all future licensing rounds. A part of the agreement includes plans for a just transition for the affected region to ensure development and employment, taking care of the impacted workers. So today, the coastal town of Espia is on its way to become a true hub for technologies of the future, including the Danish offshore wind industry. 
Besides servicing the growing offshore wind industry, the workers that used to work in oil and gas exploration will at CCS facilities now be able to use what it is that they've learned for decades. So actually now we'll have a situation where the same companies and people that used to make money pumping carbon up from the ground will now make a living putting it back under the ground. We are far from our goal in Denmark and we are far from perfect in our endeavors, but we are on the way and we hope that some of our experiences can inspire others. It is crucial for this commission that we deliver concrete, tangible, and actionable recommendations ready for use by governments and other actors across the world right away. I'll do my best to make this happen. Thank you so much, Dr. Birol, uh, for giving Denmark this opportunity. Back to you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Minister both to you and to uh, Madam uh, Prime Minister. Uh, dear colleagues, as Mr. Minister said, clean uh, energy transitions are gaining very strong momentum uh, around the world, and this will lead to prof profound changes in our energy systems. And therefore, employment uh, will change. Some sectors will gain significantly, while others in inevitably uh, decline. And here, governments will need to proactively prepare for change and to protect those adversely affected. In some of those, some of the countries, for example, in some of the Asian countries, coal industry is the number one employer by far. Millions of people are, as we say, getting their bread from the coal industry. But coal and the climate change don't go together. How we are going to manage these things will be a major, major uh, challenge. So it is the reason why we have built this uh, uh, commission and the, uh, to see how we can exchange uh, ideas, learn from each other's experiences and uh, address the questions such as employment, inclusion and uh, equity. And the, uh, the recommendations of this uh, commission that is going to be chaired uh, by uh, Minister uh, Jorgensen uh, will be made uh, ready just uh, before the uh, COP26 as agreed with the COP uh, presidency. And we uh, expect that uh, they will play an important role in the deliberations of the Glasgow uh, meeting. And uh, of course, one important uh, dimension is the perspective of young people, something we will also be including in this initiative. I am very pleased to announce that uh, we have, in a very short period of time, uh, uh, Minister Jorgensen and myself invited uh, some uh, key figures uh, around the world, different parts of the world, and uh, we have already received several uh, government leaders, uh, ministers, energy, climate, economy, being part of it. I would like to name uh, some of them uh, to you and the full list will be in our press uh, release. We will uh, have the we have the honor to have the Prime Minister of uh, Guyana. We will have the honor of the, having the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Ecological Transition of Spain. We will have the Energy uh, Minister uh, of Indonesia. We will have the Secretary of Energy uh, of uh, Mexico. We will have the Petroleum and Energy Minister of uh, Senegal. We will have the Minister of Energy of uh, Chile. We will have the uh, Oil and Gas Minister of Oman, an oil producing uh, country. We will have the Minister of uh, Mines and Energy of uh, Colombia. We will have the, again, the Energy Minister of Canada, Belgium, Norway, and the Environmental Ministry of uh, Italy. We also have the Secretary General of the International Trade uh, Union Confederation. We have the former Minister of Labor of France, who is currently an ambassador to uh, OECD. And we are going to announce very soon, joining us, a top government official from the US administration who just took uh, office. 
as you can see, the Global Commission will bring together a diverse range of uh, leading uh, government uh, figures, thinkers, and decision makers across the uh, world. I want to thank uh, them all for agreeing to join us in this important work, and I look forward to learning from them all. In conclusion, the reason why we have convinced these eminent people to work together through the, uh, the Global Commission People-Centered Energy Transition is just to make sure that our clean energy transition, which is inevitable, we are pushing forward, is fair, and as Mr. Minister said, we put the people at the heart of it. And here, we would like to give a few minutes, uh, two minutes of a pause before we get the question. I see many questions are already coming from the press. And uh, in the meantime, I think we are going to uh, jet showing a, a video uh, to colleagues for uh, one and a half, two minutes. And Mr. Minister and myself will be ready to uh, take your questions. Thank you. <laughs> 